Good morning. I apologize for being late. Welcome back to the Daily Grind. I'm your host, Jump Change. This is live recorded for anybody that might be new here. What we typically do is go over crypto news in the space, update myself, bring you guys along for the ride. Let's see who's here in the chat. And then we will get into this Mr. Max Voltage at DJ Mines. My man giving me shit in the chat already. It's too early for that, DJ. Happy Thursday, everybody. Happy Thursday. Let's see who else is here. DJ Death Star, good to see you. Leo Lustig. I got the package. I forgot to bring it down yesterday. I'll open it at the end of the stream today. We have Black Hat Team. Good to see you, buddy. Let's see. Lawnmower Man, Carl Coat, uh, Nick K, Cook4015. Good to see you, buddy. Sustainable Crypto, Andrew Massad, Much Train, Chris Hanley, Sustainable Crypto, my man. Appreciate you. And everybody else I may have missed. I apologize. We need to get into this because today is a good day. Oh, that is not the screen I'm supposed to show. <clears throat> I was helping veteran miner yesterday get situated and I screwed up my stream. <laughs> so give me a second. That's why I'm trying to catch up. Give me one second. Um, man, this is not good. Where is, all right, hold on. See, this is technical difficulties that are not fun to deal with during your stream, but why is this not working right? Not working right. Hmm. Hold on, fellas. See, I try to help people. Thank you for the sub, whoever just subbed. I try to help people and then I screw myself up. This is what happens. This is what happens. See? See? That's why I didn't want to go live yet because I wasn't ready, DJ, you bastard. Um, why can I not figure out why this won't work? Why will this not work? Hmm. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Figured it out. There we go. Okay. Man, that was annoying. All right. There we go. How's that? Bitcoin, 67,432 bucks. Apologize for the hiccups. We have Ethereum at 3550. Looking amazing. Solana is at 190 bucks. Not too bad. Dogecoin, Shiba, Pepe, all these meme coins are pumping. Casp is pumping. I got some more at 11 cents. Super excited about that. Uh, actually, I got 11 and 12 cents. I was buying like all the way down, which is amazing. We have ETC at 30 bucks. ETC, actually, that's 30 bucks. It was under 30 bucks. Man, I thought that shit was closer to 40. Anyways, must have had a deeper pullback than I thought. But there's some fun with Ethereum going on today. And uh, yeah, we're going to be listening to that in just a second. Let's jump over to Crypto Bubbles. Let's see what's doing the best on the day. Looks like ondo whatever this is i have no idea what this coin is ondo ranked 96 it jumped into the top 100 looks like it's 79 cents anybody know what this is let me know in the chat if you do oh let's see wait max's birthday's today max holy sh you're 70 today happy 70th birthday buddy <laughs> I'm just kidding. Max is in 70s, not 70. I know. I'm joking. I love you, Max. I love you, buddy. <laughs> Happy birthday. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was your birthday. Of all, that's why you said of all days to be late. I got you. All right. Let's see. We have, again, Cast is up 16.6% today. We have Jasmine up 20.9%. Is anybody into Jasmine? We have two cents over here. Uh, let's see. Floki up 27.2%. I don't know if anybody's into this Floki Inu stuff. I don't know. Whiff, dog, whiff hat is up 9.4%. Ron, which is Ronin, I guess, up 15.4%. If Solana, again, 7.6% up on the day. BCH up 14.7%. Ooh, we got some uh, news with that, actually. That and Dogecoin. I'll get into that in just a bit. All right, let's jump over to Fear and Greed Index. Flashbang, we have 78 on the Extreme Greed chart. Again, we saw things flip back from around 60,000 yesterday to 67 where it's at today so yeah this is understandable right but at the end of the day it's really not that bad my god max is just 69 <laughs> just keith oh that's great all right let's move over to top 10 coins on coin gecko by coin market cap we have bitcoin ethereum tether bnb solana lato staked ether xrp usdc cardano and dogecoin is back in the 10th place at 21.9 billion dollar market cap flipped avalanche by a billion dollars look at that we have shiba inu still in 12th place which is uh again 
still quite shocking i'm not gonna lie 16 billion dollar market cap on that one uh let's scroll down a bit we have litecoin in 22nd place looks like etc is in 31st we have render still kicking ass at 11 dollars 14 cents in 32nd place damn hedera i actually got some of this h bar the other day um around 10 cents so yeah not a bad buy not a bad buy we're just uh gotta see where it goes i guess i'm not sure if anybody's like bullish on this one let me know if you are in the chat we have 43 ranking for caspa again 14 point sorry 0.1469 cents today uh let's see what else nothing else really popping out at me nothing else popping Jeez, dude these meme coins man they're climbing the charts look at this 55th place dog with hat and 57th for floki that's crazy that's crazy these meme coins man i don't know where the hell they're going but they're they're pumping all right let's move on to the mining segment we've got a lot of shit we want to watch today haven't had a chance to watch any of this stuff so you guys know i like to timestamp this we have the bitmain antminer ks5 pro 21 terahash unit making 169 dollars a day that is much better than it was uh the other day or yesterday rather we have the ks5 20 terahash unit making 161 dollars a day the bmks max 11 terahash unit making 80 dollars we have the k the wind miner k9 10.3 terahash unit making 78.99 a day uh scroll down a bit we have the ice river ks3 over here eight terahash unit making 59.82 we have the ks3m six terahash unit making 42.47 did any of you guys order the uh the commemorative or commemorative or whatever the hell that word is the uh green edition ks0 is it commemorative is that how you say that i'm pretty sure that's how you say it but anyways um did you guys get that let me know i think it was 350 bucks i'm not sure if anybody got one i know a lot of people did but i don't know if anybody actually received it yet that's kind of why i'm asking did anybody get their unit in yet I would be very interested to know. Uh, the Superscaler K10 looks like Carlson's still on the top of the charts for that. Man, that's so weird to me that it's still on top of the charts and it's only a cent. Pyron's actually been killing it. I know that, but there's no ASICs for Pyron. Uh, let's see. We have the Ice River KS2 looking like we are making $14 even a day. Look at this. is all a 10 cents kilowatt hour, by the way. Shout out to uh, Terra Hosting. That's what you pay for ASICs over there. My Antminer L7 is actually killing it. $12. 35 cents a day i just went down and visited these units last week and i got a video coming real soon started editing up yesterday so i'll be dropping that at some point hopefully uh, let's see the bitmain t21 what is the t21 why is it called a t21 this is just get added to the chart or did i just like graze over this yesterday 190 terahashes <clears throat> has anybody seen this before eleven dollars and 23 cents i don't remember seeing this one i feel like i might have grazed over yesterday i'm not sure though uh let's see <laughs> i need my card sorry i was just catching up in the chat you guys are ridiculous all right let's see uh we have let's scroll down where is the s19k right here i got one of these units 120 terra hash unit making six bucks a day just about five dollars 97 cents not too bad the jazz miner x4 looks like it's mining pow blocks again most profitable there making five dollars 77 cents a day scroll down i don't know where the ks1 was i obviously skipped it but the ks0 pro is making a dollar 44 a day the og ks0 is making 68 cents a day again that's all a 10 cents kilowatt hour let's see where's the ks1 ks1 making six dollars in 94 cents a day not too bad not too bad all right let's move on to gpus let's see what we got over here what is this i don't even know how to say that ayat ayat coin i don't even know how you're supposed to say that anyways let's move on <laughs> let's jump in here and man this the, the way they added these new columns i don't know why they did that it's weird anyways looks like htn is on top of the charts for all the cards today the highest in the last 24 hours has been pyron though pyron look at that nice lrs and cau on top of the charts as well with hypra uh looks like xano is here for some of the cards it's mostly pyron though pyron in this htn coin i believe this is the new coin this is that this one that's not this one is it usat or whatever the hell it's called usat is it it is how does that logo look different hmm this looks like the uh is it northern bank or something that's not the logo i'm thinking of 
anyways who said i don't know what this coin is looks like another i would assume caspa fork of some sort that runs on pyron hash and yeah apparently it is the most profitable i'm assuming it's very power efficient uh kind of like pyron i have all of my units actually mining pyron as of this moment over to unminable to get paid out in caspa because i think that is a better bet than holding pyron anyways these are the list of new coins if you guys are interested go check out mining pool stats stream not sponsored by the way this is just like a good place to go look at new coins if you guys are interested please be careful though downloading any of the stuff from this site new coins can be malicious so that's that all right let's move on to the news i kind of want to go over a few things before we get into the videos coinbase to launch futures trading for dogecoin litecoin and bitcoin cash on april 1st that's coming up real soon two weeks not even like a week and a half right april 1st so that's uh yeah that's that i wonder what's gonna happen uh yeah that's pretty much it i'm just gonna leave it like that uh we have bitcoin price gains 12 percent post fomc while bitcoin ignores 260 million etf outflows crazy bitcoin wastes no time liquidating shorts as bitcoin price rebounds rebound follows the latest federal reserve economic policy meeting as you guys know we were down close to 60k or so yesterday and bitcoin's price has recovered to a real decent amount actually at 67 and a half thousand what we basically did was in my opinion liquidate longs and then we liquidated shorts like back to back that's that's exactly what happened shaking out the new timmies like welcome to the market mofos this is what we're doing <laughs> so that's what happens there we have also over here on coin telegraph ethereum core devs launch pump the gas effort to raise the gas limit so i'm not sure how this makes sense i mean I, I don't know what anything ethereum does make sense but the devs argue that raising the gas limit to 40 million will cut ethereum's layer one transaction fees by 15 to 33 percent i will believe it when i see it i don't have a stop the cap button but i wish i could hit it that's just it all right let's move into this crypto world cnbc television ether recovers losses after a report that ethereum foundation faces sec probe let's see i guess the sec is giving ethereum some shit about being a security or not i guess let's see what this is all about guys the like button appreciate you for hanging out let's do it today the ethereum foundation reportedly faces an investigation sam bankman fried's attorneys push back on a proposed half century prison sentence and austin federa of solana foundation talks the recent meme token craze and what's next for the blockchain network Real quick, sorry to cut this off. Duke Nukem said, uh, did you hear about the mining power smart node hosting getting attacked and drained yesterday? I didn't. I don't think I did. That's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Brandon Gomez. Bitcoin inching lower this morning after the crypto market shed as much as $400 billion of value in the past week. Now, by noon Eastern, the cryptocurrency slipped further below the $64,000 mark. That's after a volatile trading day yesterday pushed it as low as $60,000. Ether, meanwhile, hovering just under $3,300. And the meme token rally? Well, it's taking a bit of a break today as well. Dogecoin falling about 2.5%. So what's behind the recent pullback? Well, it seems to be largely tied to profit taking. VJ Ayar of CoinDCX told CNBC, these kinds of 20 to 30% drawdowns are a normal occurrence when things start heating up. So far, Bitcoin has tumbled more than 13% from its all-time high. Okay, let's talk about today's top stories, and we start with some breaking news. The Ethereum Foundation reportedly under investigation by the SEC. According to Fortune, the U.S. regulator began a probe into the foundation shortly after the network shifted to proof of stake in 2022. The outlet also spoke to a person at a company who received a subpoena request. Back in February, Ethereum updated its website to reflect that it had received a voluntary inquiry from a state authority, one that required confidentiality, and also removed a disclosure on the foundation's website that said it had never been contacted by an agency that required confidentiality. We did reach out to the Ethereum Foundation and the SEC, but have not heard back yet. Next, Sam Bankman-Fried is pushing back on a proposed half-century prison sentence. Last Friday, prosecutors in his criminal fraud case proposed a 40 to 50 year prison sentence for the disgraced crypto CEO, <laughs> citing the historic <laughs> nature of the crime. Well, SBF's lawyers said in a letter to the judge yesterday that the proposal casts him as a depraved supervillain 
and amounts Eat to shit, a Gary. death in prison sentence. They also <laughs> said that the court should consider that customers will be made whole through the bankruptcy process. So in actuality, there were never any losses. Let's what? In actuality, there were never any losses? They just say that? What? <laughs> oh my god, that's ridiculous. And with Crypto Wallet wow. Maker Ledger, it's gearing up to launch a new hardware wallet that takes after the <laughs> iPod. The Ledger Stacks was designed by the iconic music player's wow. inventor, Tony Fidel, like and is that. set to go on sale in May. It's the size of about a credit card, and CNBC got to take a look at it back in 2022 when it was first announced. Now, after that multi-year delay, Ledger CEO Pascal Gauthier spoke to CNBC at the Blockworks Digital Assets what? Summit and said the company- This is kind of cool. What is this? Ledger's new wallet? That's neat. He nailed it, and the product would be out in two months. You can read the full story- Listen, I still love my Tangent. It's only 50 bucks and the thing kicks ass. I could swap coins inside of it, but that's kind of a cool feature for Ledger. I think they're still trying to make up for that whole sharding BS. That is kind of cool though about the new wallet over at cnbc.com. All right, let's talk about our main story of the day, Solana. Crypto World's Mackenzie Sigalos spoke with Austin Federa, head of strategy at the Solana Foundation. They discussed the huge run-up in meme tokens, including those on the network, and Solana's development as crypto interest has reignited. So we've seen this really tremendous run up in the price of these altcoins. And I feel like this happens almost every single bull run where you see Bitcoin and Ethereum, those blue chip uh, crypto tokens run up. And then comparatively speaking, some of these altcoins tend to look like a bargain buy. Now, whereas in 2021, it felt like this was very frothy, it was, you know, bubble like behavior. I'm wondering if you think that this price run up that we're seeing right now is any different in nature, if, if, if any of the fundamentals have changed. Yeah, I mean, one of the things to keep in mind whenever you're looking at cryptocurrencies and sort of the state of the market is the utility of what's actually possible to be built on chain. I think we're seeing in this cycle a lot more differentiation between what the technical capabilities are of a blockchain and what the actual developer adoption is, what applications and services are actually being built on top of them. And that's where you're starting to see a lot more differentiation between different technology solutions today. It really is incredible to see all the enthusiasm around the L2 ecosystem, not just in Ethereum and Solana, but also in Bitcoin, pretty much for the first time ever. We're seeing a lot of developers move into that space. What, what are you most interested in in terms of what's being built on top of Solana right now? Are there projects that you would single out as being a really good example of, of what's really moving the dial right now? Yeah, the L2 conversation, whether it's on Ethereum or Bitcoin or other networks, is really driven by a need for scale and a need for performance. Uh, today's blockchains, really apart from Solana, cannot deliver the scale and performance necessary for the sort of next generation of consumer facing applications that we're really hoping are the future of a lot of blockchain. The financial stuff with DeFi has been great to see. It sort of laid a foundation. And now the next step is really this consumer adoption to start competing with mobile phones and central social media and these other types of services so one example of this is something like drip house uh, drip house flips the nft market framework on its head and instead of selling a limited number of nfts for really high value they actually give them away it's an artist a discovery platform and content creation platform and people can subscribe to channels the same way they might subscribe to a creator channel on instagram or youtube or something like that and that's really only possible when you have 10x, 100x, 1000x reductions in those core costs. It's very similar to how the advent of high-speed internet and high-speed mobile connectivity ushered in an entirely new wave of consumer-facing applications for a market with a smartphone that was previously just business chat and email applications. So I was in Denver a few weeks ago and a lot of people were buzzing about uh, this most recent upgrade to the Ethereum ecosystem, Dencoon. Uh, you know, one of the, the biggest benefits of this was that it was meant to reduce transaction fees by up to 90%, which is a game changer, not just for the end user, but also for app developers. And, and you mentioned social media apps. Of course, it, it was meant to break open uh, what's possible in terms of decentralized social media, gaming. Did it actually do any of that for the fees, though? Has anybody noticed it? I haven't now that it would no longer be cost prohibitive. How have you seen that playing out so far? Yeah, the, the evolution of what are called blobs, which is this sort of ephemeral data space. For These are a lot lower, says Jim C. Interesting. I haven't traded much on uh, Ethereum, but I know it's mostly for like layer twos. So like, I guess I don't mess with layer twos too much. But yeah, some people are saying it's still ter terrible. So I don't know. Weird. Or 
transactions has really helped drive down the cost of transactions on Ethereum based networks. And this is really a benefit for I mean, that's a the good whole thing. industry. You know, Solana's uh, median transaction fee is still fractions of a penny, which is lower than many of these L2 solutions today. But the rise of cheap block space and cheap transactions is a benefit for everyone looking to build on crypto and for users looking to actually find applications built on blockchain that are not just financial applications. So this is one of those situations where I think you know, the entire block space getting cheaper in general will create more opportunity for more types of developers and it will attract more users to the ecosystems as well. Oh, yeah. oh Jim C meant to say not. It was a it was an error. <laughs> it's a, it auto corrected to lot instead of not. That's hysterical. <laughs> That's something I've often wondered, you know, whether you think of it more as a multi-chain future and a rising tide lifts all ships, so to speak, or, you know, I mean, Solana has always competed on the fact that it's faster and it's cheaper and there are certain uh, things that you give up in order to have that. But uh, is this something where you see Ethereum as more of a rival or is it just like a net benefit for the entire ecosystem? It, it sounds like it's the latter. So it is a net benefit, but I would say one of the main differentiating factors with Solana is that it operates in one global state. So the state of L2s is a very fragmented ecosystem. Um, it's very similar to if you have your money in one bank, you can't go to another bank and get a loan. These are, these are segmented systems, even though they're all part of a financial ecosystem. On Solana, everything operates in one global state. So programs on Solana can establish trust with one another. If you have you know, money in one sort of a DeFi ecosystem, you can borrow against it in another. And that's only possible when things exist on one global state that don't rely on bridges and oracles and all of these other solutions to sort of stitch together the fabric of a fragmented ecosystem. And you know, L2s definitely have their role. They're one expression of how this technology can scale. I happen to think Solana's approach, uh, you know, has really strong merits and will we'll bear out over the long term here. But, you know, this is an industry that is still in the very early stages of growth and user facing adoption. It's big enough for many credible theories on what the future of the technology can look like. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Solana is definitely much better. Um, I mean, no, that doesn't mean Ethereum's not going to go up and the fees aren't, uh, you know, possibly going to get better. But as of right now, Solana is definitely killing the game when it comes to like this whole ecosystem. Uh, you guys had went for a year long stretch without any sort of downtime. You had an outage last month. It was you know, relatively sizable. How did you guys deal with that and, and how have things been going since then? Yeah, I mean, performance and reliability are really the main focus for engineers at the core engineering groups that are building the Solana code base today. And, you know, what I'll say is that work that was done building through the bear is actually the reason Solana today can, you know, stand up so well to the highest demand anyone has ever seen in blockchain, right? Solana is processing more daily transactions than, you know, all other uh, L1s and L2s combined when you look at that sort of space today. And that is really a testament to the engineering work that was done throughout the last two years to get Solana into this state. But Solana is nowhere near finished as a code base. There are major new features that are being rolled out. There's a lot of improvements being made to improve the experience. And from a reliability standpoint, one of those major uh, investments is a project called FireDancer, which is a new validator client for the Solana network, which will help uh, increase both decentralization and resiliency to downtime in the future. But that is definitely something that you know folks are paying attention to and working on, and the network reliability is not quite where it needs to be today. All right, that's it for Crypto World today. Shout we'll be out back to, here again to Crypto World, CNBC for that. All right, let's move on. So this is Paul Barron Network. This is actually going to be part of the videos thing. He has Mark Yusko, or Yusko, however you're supposed to say his last name, on his uh, channel, and they talk about the Ethereum SEC FUD. So let's uh, let's dive into it, guys. That like button, if you're interested in this guy's channel, go check him out. Link's in the description below. Let's do it. Bitcoin. I think you guys are going to like it. We have a special guest. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Joining me today is Mr. Mark Yusko coming over from Morgan Creek Capital. Great to have you back. Hey, always great to be with you, Paul. Happy Wednesday. Yeah, I see your... For the record, it's Thursday, but we're watching this a day later. Your conference schedule is pretty heated right now. Busy. I'm actually going to bump this up to 125, maybe possibly one and a half. Let me know what you guys think. You got a lot cooking, so congrats to everything that you're doing out there. I want to jump in first up on the Ethereum FUD that seems to be coming in. I've got yeah. a few tweets here, one from Watcher Guru, just in the ETH Foundation under investigation by state authority. This is coming over from Coindesk. And then you also have this tweet 
right there. SEC pursuing legal campaign to classify Ethereum as a security. Before we get to another tweet, I want to get your opinion on what's going on here. Do we have something with the SEC and the Ethereum Foundation, or is this simply FUD? What your, what's your opinion? Definitely FUD. You know, definitely fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, that is that is how the incumbents deal with technological innovation, right? So blockchains are the future of computing, full stop. And they're not, you know, the technology is not going away. And I've been shilling this book, you know, that Chris Dixon wrote, Read, Write, Own, for yeah. anybody who wants to understand why, you know, this thing that I've been talking about for, for almost 10 years, about the cycle of technology, from the mainframe yeah. to the microchip, to the personal computer, to the internet, to the mobile net, and now the truth net, which is the internet of, of blockchains, and, and why you know, AI is not it, right? AI is a tool that's been around 75 years. It ran on you know, big computers, and it ran on personal computers, and it ran on the internet, and then it ran on the mobile net, and now eventually it ran on blockchains. I will say it's a 75-year overnight success story. But the, the FUD, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt is spread every single time there's an innovation in technology that threatens. So he's Morgan Creek Capital Management. What, is, uh, what does Morgan Creek do? Does anybody know? I'm going to have to like Google this because I really don't know. Are they like, do they have like an ETF or anything or no? Is it just like a normal investment company? Incumbents livelihood. So you can go back to the internet, right? AT&T and Verizon tried to kill literally the internet because they didn't like what you and I are doing right now. Voice over internet protocol is free. They charged $3 a minute for long distance. You know, we're far away from each other. And they liked charging $3 a minute for that. So they tried to get a bill passed and they spread all these rumors about how the internet was bad. And thankfully, I would say, you know, Al Gore did not invent the internet, but he did kill that bill, which stopped them from, from over-regulating it. And, you know, the same thing's true now. The banks are being disrupted by these chains. And financial services, as we know it, which has had a good 838-year run under its current form, based on trust, is being displaced by truth. Blockchains give you truth. And therefore, as we think about, you know, how would you stop these, these chains, these, these innovations from happening? Well, we'll, we'll over-regulate them. Well, yeah. because you don't have any jurisdiction because they're not securities. Well, then, then we'll classify them as securities. Or we'll try to classify them as commodities and get some other regulator to, you know, collaborate, you know, to uh, work with us. Well, they tried that with Bitcoin. They tried to overregulate. They tried to regulate by um, attack on you know new technology and, and new innovation. And what happened? The courts said, "Gary, you you've <clears throat> overstepped your bounds." And now we have Bitcoin ETFs, and and they're part of the culture of the future of financial services. For sure. So real quick, some of you guys said uh, their money, small money managers, uh, hedge funds, and mutual funds is what his company does. Interesting. So I assume no ETFs, but I wonder, I wonder, uh, I don't know. I wonder how that whole thing goes along with, uh, the ETFs. Like, are these guys able to invest in the ETFs of their company yet, or are they still waiting on the sidelines? So now next up is Ethereum. Well, Bitcoin is better money, right? It's a blockchain application for digital gold, or as Michael Saylor says, digital property. If you guys don't know who Mark Yosko is, he's uh, he's actually spoke highly of Bitcoin for a long ass time. So I know he's personally invested in it. I don't know if, oh, they do have a, all right. So Panera cards actually in the chat said they have a Bitcoin fund. Okay. All right. Makes sense. That is the future of money. Okay, great. That was my question. Ethereum is different. Ethereum is the future of global compute. And you've heard, you know, Sam Altman and others say that compute is the most valuable asset uh, in the future. And, and that's true. And eventually it will be invisible, right? Like I can't explain to you, Paul, how I can talk into this metal and glass box on my desk and you can hear me and see me in real time in HD. I would say a guy with a face for radio would like if it wasn't so HD, but um, I can't explain how that works, but, but I don't need to because it does, it's invisible. And I can't explain to you exactly how a hash is created for cryptography to work but I don't need to, I just need it to work. And I need to know that Good once point. we have truth on chain, and that's different than online right. and different than offline, right? Yeah. We used to, when you and I used to trade things, we would have to be physically proximate to each other mm -hmm. and we would exchange goods or services, okay? Then 
online came along and you could send me an email instead of a handwritten snail mail letter and we could exchange goods or services electronically. We didn't have to be physically proximate to, to each other anymore. And online disrupted the old offline world. Well, now on chain is going to disrupt how we exchange value as opposed to goods and services, because anything of value can now be digitized, can now be created as a unique asset on a blockchain. That's the mind blowing part, right? I right. can take any asset in the world, create a unique asset that cannot be duplicated, cannot be double spent, cannot be challenged for who has title. It is digital property rights. And Ethereum is a global distributed network that allows certain types of transactions, as does Solana and others. And we'll talk more about the differences there. So that's a long-winded way of saying it's FUD, it's expected. And the reality is the courts forced the SEC and Chairman Gensler to approve the Bitcoin ETF. Yeah. There have been no well, such court ruling, no such lawsuit to force his hand on Ethereum. Right. Therefore, he can do all of this, you know, FUD campaign to make people afraid that it's not going to happen. And as we all, as we all know, people will buy the rumor, whatever that rumor is, whether it's new technology adoption, whether it's new chips, whether it's new products, and then they, some of them will sell the news. And so you'll get this run up in price. And then if it doesn't happen or it does happen, you know, they'll, they'll sell out of fear. If it doesn't happen, they'll sell out of, I'm gonna take my profits if it does. And we saw that after the Bitcoin ETFs, and then they went back up and now yeah. there's been some you know downside pressure ethereum ran along with it got all the way up over five thousand dollars and you know or four thousand dollars sorry and well, now yeah. bam back down again well i think the key here as we see you know disruptive technologies that you're alluding to really kind of start to take hold around the whole process of the financial system and i think the difference point and you know i've talked about this before is this is now money this is no longer you know the disruptive technology of the internet even though that really disrupted communication which is another big issue that we're now facing, including all governments around the yeah. world, you know, around freedom of speech. This was a good tweet here from uh, Scott Melker over there, Wolf of Wall, of Wall Street, uh, shout out Scott. Uh, BlackRock is launching their tokenized asset fund on Ethereum. <laughs> At the same time, they seed it with $100 million. They're, they're launching this on Ethereum. Uh, you would think that Larry might have Gensler on the phone and say, uh, uh, listen here, <laughs> what do we got going on here with uh, investigations Look, that are frivolous against what we're doing here to change BlackRock, BlackRock is gonna do what BlackRock is gonna do. Yeah. They are the largest asset manager in the world. I, I, I told people for a year, that there was no question in my mind. As soon as they announced they were going after the, the Bitcoin ETF, it, not only was it gonna get approved, they were gonna be first. Right. Now, you know, they, they decided to crown them all at the same time, but, mm -hmm. um, and, the and look, Bitcoin has, I mean, BlackRock has applied for an ETF in Ethereum as well. Listen, if they didn't crown them all at the same time, it would have been so unfair, it's not even funny. I think the challenge now is who has the bigger, you know, stick, shall we say, and everything is political appointments yeah. of these, you know, unelected people are by the current administration that, that happens to appoint them. It happens to be an election year. So look, Ms. Warren is pretty anti all of this. Why? Well, she my sucks. thesis, I won't, I won't put words in her mouth, but my thesis is, you look at her largest campaign contributors, they happen to be large financial institutions that have a great deal at stake if they are disrupted. So it's not surprising to me that she Makes would sense. craft legislation to slow down the, the disruptive technology. Okay, the fact that it's an election Always year and that agenda. she's, uh, well, I mean, the, show me the, who, who said it, show me the incentive, I'll show you the outcome. Um, there you go. That is the way the Very world true. has always worked. And you know, here's the problem, political problem, as I see it. It costs, from what I've read and, and studied, about $100 million to secure a Senate seat in the United States. $100 million. Jesus. Most of us don't have that. So if we want to run, unless your name is Meg Whitman, who spent $103 million or $108 million, I can't remember, mm. of her own money. Yeah. She lost, unfortunately, but, but she spent over $100 million of her own money. The fuck? She spent over $100 million and lost? <laughs> oh, my God. Where's the rope? Mr. Uh, Midwest Mining. Thank you. so. Oh, I didn't mean to hit that. I meant to hit this. 
<laughs> well, the, I guess round of applause is uh, in in effect because that is your first, or sorry, your third super chat on a live stream. Thank you so much for the 4.99 super chat. I said thanks, Chubb. Awesome way to start our morning. Perfect. Appreciate you, buddy. Um, DJ is gonna be screaming in a second. I'm sure. Um, unless you're her or someone like her, you have to raise a hundred million dollars. Well, it turns out if people write you one, ten, twenty, fifty million dollar checks, Paul, well, they expect something. Yep. And that's the way our system works in a world where you allow unlimited contributions to, you know, PACs and super PACs. So either fix campaign finance and make people so they're not on the payroll of special interest or do term limits like the old days, right? And when the founders fra the framers set it up. Two there he is, DJ Yellen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, Mr. Midwest Perfect. Mining. You're awesome for the super chat. Thank you so much. Here's, you left the farm, you went, you served, and then you went back. You didn't right. stay for six or eight or 10 or 50. You stayed for two. And, and maybe two is too short. Maybe we need four or six. I don't know what the right number is. But it in 20, it in 40, and it in 50. Yeah, lifetime. And there's also, it's also vitality, right? You know, yeah. when are you the most vital? When are you the most, um, yeah, I, I hate to say it, but I watched some speeches of our current president when he was 35. I'm like, yeah, right on. I agree with you. I don't say that now. <laughs> yeah, it's a different guy. It's a different guy. Now he's walking into walls. <laughs> for sure um all right so to wrap up the ETH uh, segment here uh, would you give the ETH etf a fighting chance going into maybe it doesn't happen in may but definitely this year or next yeah. what's your thought on that uh, uh, it will happen when the powers that be deem it appropriate and if blackrock really really wants it to happen yeah it'll happen yeah. um maybe because i think they now. they have a bigger stick i think they do have a bigger stick than than the current chairman uh Marks. let's say I mean, I think it's highly unlikely before the election because the current guy was appointed by the current administration. Right. And so he's going to do what he has to do to stay. Now, if, if, if the administration were to change in November, how quickly would they replace you know, the SEC chairman? Probably pretty quickly. How quickly yeah. would that person, you know, do I think the ETH ETF is high on the agenda? No, I don't think it's hmm. at the bottom. But I don't yeah. think it's the first thing they would do. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to to see. Um, I think the evolution of our financial and the monetary system. When you look at BlackRock's success that they've had in just a very short period of time, and I won't say BlackRock only. It's really the nine. I mean, you you've got to look at Fidelity as well, even to a certain extent. Yep. Uh, Arc. Um, th there. This is a major move. It this was, was a, a yep. yeah for sure. This was a, a statement by Dan Tapiero. ETF adoption set to keep driving Bitcoin's price. Uh, this coming in also with the scenario as if coin you know kind of the coinbase effect which is adding more people some people thought coinbase might get affected but in reality it's probably opened up the coffers for them for new accounts plus yeah. of course the yeah. custody side of this when you look at the etf inflows even though we had some um, different inflows at the early start of this week bitcoin now starting to correct around 64k um first of all do you feel like this etf inflow can continue at the pace in which it's happening right now or do you think it's going to accelerate um, yes and yes. So I definitely think it can oh. continue. Um, I mean, we've, I think we've seen 12-ish billion of net inflow over the, the eight weeks or so. I think that abs it's absolutely going to continue. Absolutely can and will continue. Do I think it is likely to accelerate, not decelerate? Yeah. And the reason 100%. is we still don't have all of the wirehouses and independents uh, with full approval of the Thanks. ETFs uh, for their advisors. We still don't have all the education resources. Uh, there's gonna be volatility, right? I, I think the volatility that we're experiencing now, we talked about this you know, right after Chinese New Year, every year after a big year, so three out of four years in the cycle, so not on the down years, but on the three up years, you get two drawdowns in the first half of the year, one around Lunar New Year, because people in China need to cash out to fill up their red envelopes with with cash, with renminbi. And yeah, we saw that a couple of months ago, right? And that happens like a month ago. It's a big place. Second is around tax time mm -hmm. um, for the U.S. So kind of you know Ives Always. of March through the the first week of April. People like, get their tax returns. They want to spend money, and they most of them will invest it into something that they should invest it in. And others will just blow it on. Bullshit. <laughs> As people realize, oh, geez, I, I got to pay taxes on all that crypto that I traded last year because it was up, you know, 155%. And, and, and there's natural selling. And so mm -hmm. that in the short that run too. swamps 
the inflows. You got the yeah. the added challenge that GBTC made a decision, which I don't I don't fault them for uh, in terms of being money grabbers. Uh, you got a, you got a captive audience, most of which came in at you know six, eight, ten grand Bitcoin. So they have huge capital gains. If they sell, they're going to incur big taxes. So it was highly unlikely they were going to sell right away just to save 100 basis points. Um, but if it was in a not-for-profit account, an IRA, retirement account, those were going to get sold. And that was bang, 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 the first, yeah. first you know, few weeks of withdrawals. Now there's some arbitrage going on out there that, that people don't pay attention to. Um, you know, interesting thing is financialization of this market is good in so many ways, right? I, I said all along, if, if the only purpose of Bitcoin is to put it on your ledger, and bury it in your backyard, we can all go back to our day jobs because we have that, sure. that's called gold. And it's yeah. been good for 5,000 years. Good but point. what people don't <laughs> think about is that gold isn't just the, the, the few bars or coins that you stuff in your safe at your house as running money. It is the base layer of money. Every central bank in the world owns it. They issue currency on top of it. Mm -hmm. And the same True. thing about Bitcoin. If Bitcoin wants to be digital gold, digital property, Right, eventually take on real estate as the great store of value, then it needs to be deposited. It needs to be lent out. It needs to be borrowed against. It needs to be financialized, meaning people can borrow against it. They can decide if they want to rehypothecate it or not. We need rules and, and regulations like the banking industry has. Um, so the future of finance should look like the past of finance and violators like Bear Stearns and Lehman and others should, should go bust. And, and we shouldn't bail them out, by the way. But um, so... Ultimately, we are on the right path and the right trajectory, but it's never a straight line with no bumps or hiccups. You know this because you've been on the street a long time. If you want to acquire a large amount of an asset, the oldest trick in the book is you don't just start buying it. You actually go short some. Mm -hmm. yep. In mm -hmm. fact, you spread a rumor saying you hate that asset and you push the... It's exactly what the news does. They'll spread... They, they will literally talk it up and then talk it down as, as the big guys are making money and we're just, you know, little Timmy's following the, the fucking path that they're carving for you. You know what I mean? Price down so you can buy it at a cheaper price. Stupid. Yeah, and whether it's George Soros. You should always like think about doing the opposite of whatever the friggin' news is saying, just to be honest, but it's nice to get the information, but it's not nice to follow the information. Not all the time. William Robertson or Paul Tudor Jones or any, or Goldman Almost Sachs. never. That's been done for centuries. Sure. And so, this idea that somehow, as soon as the ETFs were approved, we we're going to be up only, and there was going to be none of, because look, if a billion dollars comes in to the ETFs today, and I don't know if that'll be the right number or the wrong number, but let's just, let's make, let's call it 500 million. 500 million comes in, and a bunch of it goes to IBIT, the BlackRock. They, at 359 today, will, you know, they'll set the price for their ETF, and then they have to go acquire X Bitcoin, however that is. The problem is only 900 Bitcoin get created today. If they yeah. got to go buy a thousand Bitcoin, you know, that's more than 900. Market. So they got to go. Yeah. Guess what? About a month from now, we're going to be having 450 Bitcoin a day. So it's going to be cut in half. And it's literally going to be such a supply shock to these ETFs that the price is inevitably going to go up. It's someone to buy it. Yeah, got to go to the market. Or sell. So Mark, when you look at, you know, outside Bitcoin, we've talked about Ethereum and Bitcoin. I think everybody within our audience to a certain point, maybe you're new to the show. If you are, make sure and hit subscribe right now. These are some of the kind of conversations we have that dive into not only crypto, but really kind of the future of finance. But I want to talk about when you look at Solana. Now, we did a show mm -hmm. here recently. There's been a lot of speculation that Solana's movement here, cracking 200, uh, continuing to accelerate in terms of dApps, the potential of taking some of the thunder from ETH. My question is, when you look at Solana and even base to a certain extent, which one do you feel could be the retail chain? And I'm thinking, I'm thinking transactions here. Because yeah. you got at some point, yeah. we're going to have to deal with scale, transactions, speed, all of those things have to happen out there for retail, whether it's next year or the next five years. Is there one that you're leaning in yeah. on right now? So it looks like the phantom wallet swapping. I don't know what it is, but. So yes and no. I mean, when you talk about exactly as you described, all a blockchain is, is an organization of information, of data, right? Data is the mm -hmm. new oil and there's you know, lots of data created and, and a blockchain you know, the Bitcoin blockchain in particular is a record of transactions that occur between owners of, of Bitcoin, the token on the Bitcoin blockchain. So, okay. And people say, oh, but it's so slow. It can't scale. You know, it's not fast enough. Well, in tech, you can be fast or secure, never both. 
So the faster you are, the less secure you are, and the more vulnerable to hack you are, and the mo more vulnerable to breakage you are, right. and the slower you are, the more secure you are. So you think about Visa, super yep. fast. Fast, very vulnerable. Very vulnerable. Ever, ever had to get a new Visa number because someone stole your card? Constantly. Yes. So think about Solana, super fast, but it breaks down. In fact, this past weekend, I heard you know, reports that 80, 80 percent of transactions were failing. That's a nightmare. Yeah, there was That's a total yeah, quite nightmare. A bit, quite a bit of, of transactions. The growth of their meme tokens within you know, the SPL tokens kind of exploded over the now, last week. Yeah. So that's part of it. But the flip side of that is, well, that just means more and more people are going there. And that's Demand. good long term because, yep. you know, break some things and fix them, then break some things and fix them. I got that. Yep. And here's, here's an interesting question. Ethereum changed some things about the way it operates different than Bitcoin. And the Bitcoin maxis say, that's all wrong, right? Proof of stake, that's bad, that could be corrupted, you need proof of work. To be money, 100% agree. Bitcoin yeah. is digital gold, digital money, an asset that exists in the absence of a liability. Ethereum's not that, Solana's not that, nothing else. Gold, Bitcoin is money. Okay, but is that the only use case of blockchains? No, not by a right. long shot. Are there other things, to your point, on layers? I don't use money ever. I don't transact in gold. That's money. Gold is money, yeah. an asset that exists in the absence of a liability. What nice. do I use? I use a little plastic card yeah. to exchange for goods and services. Once, He's making good points, actually. Once a month, Paul, once a month, I settle from layer four, mm -hmm. the Visa you know, network, the, the database, it's literally a database in a COBOL yep. system, believe it or not, on a mainframe, okay? Once a month, I settle using ACH to mm -hmm. Fedwire, yep. my bank account. I don't ever go right. down to the Fed, you know, gold at Fort Knox and right. get a couple coins and give it to somebody. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. It's very Same true. thing's true here. Very Are true. Everything of value that is really valuable, ultimately gonna settle on the most secure chain that is secured by proof of work, yeah, I could, I, could, I could make that case. But we don't have a great L2. We have Lightning, which is okay, but yeah. it's not robust. It doesn't scale enough. We don't have L3. We don't even have L4. Is that going to get developed? Maybe. Mm -hmm. But what about this, this proof of stake thing or proof of history thing? Well, those are ways to speed up transaction processing. Okay, but what's the downside? Transactions can fail. Things can break. They can get lost, they can get hacked. You know, I, I talk about this all the time. You know, the chain link guys hate when I talk about it, but I can envision a world where there's a bunch of L1s. Yeah. Right? You got Bitcoin, you got Ethereum, and the retail chain isn't any one chain. Mm -hmm. It's I want to trade whatever I want whenever I want, and I'm going to need to use these bridges, right? It's oh, like okay. that scene in, in uh, Back to the Future. Like I've seen the future, and that's where we're going. So, yeah. I always love to, to chat with you because you give some perspective to understanding really the cycle of how technology and innovation kind of goes forward. Mark, it's always uh, great chatting with you. But yeah, it was a good, uh, that was definitely a great interview with Mark Yesko. So, I mean, he makes good points. Bitcoin is made to, you know, store your value. You don't want to lose value in your U.S. dollars, right? Buy Bitcoin, store it. Kind of like similar to buying gold, right? It's digital gold. That's what they say, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it, it is very, very neat how he... Uh, explained all of that and i think he's uh directly on point that's why the, there's coins like litecoin like caspa right caspa's thriving to be a coin that is used like on a daily basis as a transactional coin right it's supposed to be super fast super easy to spend um litecoin same thing super fast super easy to spend litecoin's an og in the space you spend litecoin you hold your bitcoin that's that's pretty much how it's always been it's just yeah, I don't know. Take it as you will. All right. Last but not least, let's get into Altcoin Daily's video, SEZ versus Crypto News. Just went from bad to worse. Let's see what FUD is getting spread over here. Links in the description below. If you guys are interested, hit that like button, please. Appreciate you for hanging out. Let's do it. I was wrong. I was very wrong. Things just got worse for Ethereum. New information has just come to light. I can't believe that this is happening. Bruh. This, to my Sounds knowledge, so sad. is the first time <laughs> The Ethereum Foundation has gotten an inquiry like this from a state agency. If you're an Ethereum investor, you need to see this. 
Ethereum is in trouble right now. Not only Ethereum, but several other members of the Ethereum ecosystem have been reached out to by government agencies associated with the SEC, according to Fortune, in connection with a broader investigation into whether Ethereum is a security, which obviously has been a long simmering question. These May ETF approvals look very dim. If Ethereum <laughs> is a security, obviously that will have some bearing on whether there is an ETF approval. And one imagines that the timing of these inquiries, if not explicitly related to trying to put a halt on these approvals, is tied to them wanting to kind of use the pending approvals as a kind of like doorway into doing this broader investigation that it seems like they're they're currently doing. Things just got worse for Ethereum. Please. You know, again, my, my biggest fear with Ethereum, and I've said it before, um, the fact that it's unlimited supply, right? So more Ethereum can be created with the click of a button for Vitalik, right? If the government takes him and just gives him a little squeeze, he's going to be printing Ethereum for them. So like, that's my biggest concern here. Um, if they can control Ethereum, then they have their legs in to the crypto verse, I guess, right? With uh, just everything going on. But um, I don't know. I wasn't really expecting an ETF in May. I didn't think it was going to happen. It's going to get pushed off as long as they can, man. That's just how it is. What did they do to Bitcoin? They did it for, it was like a year before they allowed anything. It was like six different dates that they just denied, kept denying. It's, they're going to push it out as long as they can. Please watch this whole video before you comment. Let me catch you up. It has now been just, uh, Randy said, I hold ETH, but does scare me for the future. Yeah. You know what? I hold ETH too. And I hold a decent amount of ETH. It's like my second biggest holding. It's, uh, it's one of those things where I think it's going to go far, but for how long? That's my concern. Discovered, it has now been brought to light that the Ethereum Foundation is under investigation by state authorities. Ethereum is under investigation by the government. This would be the first time we've seen something like this. That is rare. Now, initially, the scope of the government's investigation and its focus was unknown when this story first broke out. All that was known was something on Ethereum's public GitHub, a commit from February 26th, saying, we have received a voluntary inquiry from a state authority that included a requirement for confidentiality. Ooh. The Ethereum Foundation said no more than this, and all we could do was speculate. Who's looking into Ethereum? What Why does he look so freaking creepy? <laughs> it looks so goddamn creepy in that picture. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Guys, like, please just be aware that there's like all these videos you watch. There's a lot more FUD in them than you would think as you're watching them. But like being in the space for a while, watching these videos, like this is like a, this is literally a FUD video. It's just making you scared. It really is. It's like, it's just to scare the shit out of you for whatever reason. But I don't know, gets views. It is what it is. I get it. But just take it with a grain of salt as of now until actual things happen. Do they want what's going to happen? Now, this is yeah, a she was like real close to tongue in his ear right then developing story. Make sure you subscribe because we're going to keep you updated. What we know now is now that other journalistic organizations have started digging into this. The SEC is seeking to classify Ethereum as a security post haste, a move that would have major implications for Ethereum and ETH ETF and cryptocurrency as a whole. Moreover, the financial regulator, i.e. the SEC, has sent investigative subpoenas to U.S. companies in the past several weeks. The SEC is hitting up U.S. companies, asking them for information on their dealings with the Ethereum Foundation. Eat Please, shit, Gary. if you know somebody who holds Ethereum, get this information to them. Oh, it's God. amazing to me Poor that kids. we are now discovering <laughs> that the Ethereum Foundation themselves have been leaving us clues that this has been happening since February 26th through something known as a warrant canary. A warrant canary is usually some form of text or visual warning, like a colorful bird in the case of the Ethereum Foundation, which some companies include on their website to indicate that they've never been served with a secret government subpoena or document request. If Was this some Illuminati bullshit? Like what, what is that secret bird? What, <laughs> has anybody seen the secret bird? What? Government agency 
does request this information, the company may remove the text suggesting they received the request without explicitly saying so. This is exactly what's been Bruh. happening with Ethereum. There's That's these things weird. called warrant canaries that crypto protocols and other companies will put on their websites that say, hey, we haven't been reached out to by a government agency. The idea being that when that thing is not on their website, meaning they took it off the website, we as members of the public know that, hey, even though they can't say if they remove it, it means they have been reached out. So previously, the Ethereum Foundation had on their website the following disclosure. The ETH Foundation has never been contacted by any agency anywhere in the world in a way which requires that contact not to be disclosed. The ETH Foundation will publicly disclose any sort of inquiry from government agencies that falls outside the scope of regular business operations as of February 26th, this has been removed. So let's say that Ethereum is deemed to be a security. Let's say the worst happens. What would that mean for you? What would that mean for me as Ethereum holders? What would that mean for the Ethereum industry and ecosystem at large? Let's say Ether is deemed a security here in the United States. What does that mean for folks who hold Ether? And what does that mean for crypto firms that allow people to purchase Ether? Yeah, of course, um, this is an investment advice. Um, and also, we don't know what's going to happen. We just know that there's, you know, this inquiry and um, this larger investigation. Nobody so knows we don't know what's going to happen in crypto. But if we're to speculate that there is an attempt to deem Ethereum or Ether rather a security, which again, would have to work its way through its courts and still be a long way off, we're, we're very early. That would, um, I, one imagines, um, be a, a negative thing, at least for the Ethereum ecosystem, because at the very least, it would inject you know, some sort of uncertainty with regards to how the token can be traded through what venues and how other platforms could, you know, um, prop themselves up on on the wider network. So it would absolutely be relevant and probably not a positive thing one imagines. By the way, guys, it has never been more important. No. Son of a bitch. When he said, by the way, I knew it. I knew it was a shill. Mr. Retro Mike, thank you for the 199 super chat. Call of a bird. <laughs> Dot, 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 like a pigeon. Perfect. Shout out to uh, you and your favorite pigeon coin. I think I have a link to uh, Coinly down in the description below. Screw these guys. Who's Coinly? Coin Look, it's really interesting <laughs> that this is now coming to light. Actually, right after BlackRock files to launch a tokenized asset fund on Ethereum Rails. After they've already seeded this fund with 100 million in USD stablecoin. The SEC is really messing with crypto markets. I want to read you a statement that the global head of policy at A16Z and the XCFTC commissioner wrote just today. There it is. There it is. DJ screaming. Thank you again, Mr. Retro Mike. Um, to be honest, when it comes to Ethereum, I have no doubt in my mind that it's going to get between 7 and 10K this run. I would be shocked if it didn't go there, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I don't have a doubt that it'll go there. Some people are saying 10 to 15 in the chat. Uh, Dan R obviously holds no ETH and says more like lose a K. <laughs> nah, dude, honestly, Ethereum, listen, it's talk shit or make money. It's about making money at this point. I'm going to hold it until it gets to that point, and then I'm going to sell it. And then, you know what? It is what it is. If it goes up more, it goes up more. At least I profited. You know what I mean? I'm not going to uh, not gonna let this FUD sell me out on it. And you know what? Worst case, it goes down. I just hold it longer. It is what it is. When the SEC allowed ETH futures ETFs to trade on its regulated securities exchange, it explicitly acknowledged the status of the underlying Ethereum as being a non-security and outside of its jurisdiction. Also, you guys got to think about, right? Like these companies like BlackRock and Fidelity and all these guys that have like Ethereum ETFs lined up, like, you know, applications ready to go. They want to get these things into their platforms. They're not doing that to think that something's going to fail, right? Then they're not going to apply for something they think is just going to be a fucking long shot. Like they have, what? what is their thing? It's like 500 and something like approved ETFs. Like they've only had one disapproved ever. Like, I don't think, uh, I don't think it's a big deal. And DJ, seven, seven K isn't a two X. That's a sad return. That's not a sad return. That's a sad return for somebody that has like, so, so like there, there's differences, right? When it comes to making money it depends how much you have for one a 2x on a lot of money is a really good deal right um but regardless everybody's situation is different right if you're going after these low shit coins that could disappear tomorrow then yeah that, like a 2x is, is is shit right but again if you could get you know say you have 20 grand in eth 
and you can get a 2x now you have 40 grand in ETH. that's a lot of money you know what i mean it depends which way you look at it and how much you actually have importantly this ETF approval decision in October of 2023 occurred well after Ethereum changed to proof of stake September of 2022, meaning that to the SEC, Ethereum in its present state as of October 2023 was not a security. If the SEC had any doubt about the regulatory treatment of Ethereum in October of 2023, it would not approve that ETF. If Ethereum were in fact a security, then the CFTC listed futures contracts on which the ETFs were based would be illegal, as any derivative on Ethereum would be considered security futures contracts and subject to different rules listed on different exchanges and subject to joint SEC CFTC jurisdiction. Moreover, real quick, the uh, so the Ethereum I hold, I actually have mined all of it. I didn't buy any of the Ethereum that I hold. So it's all mined coins that were from ethereum being 380 bucks up to like whatever it was 2k right so it's like right now it's a great return where my ethereum's at it's just again it depends on your situation but let's put it this way you have bitcoin right you bought you you, you all right so you right now dj you're about a 2x on your bitcoin right how many more x's do you think you're actually gonna get on bitcoin why wouldn't you have purchased stocks if you think a 2x is easy right because you could have absolutely already 2 x in stocks if that's if it's that easy, right? Just just wondering. Uh, because I bought a 29k, I already 2 x Well, yeah. I mean, I bought it half that, so I've already 4 x But it's not. Again, everyone's situation is different, right? When it comes to it. If Ethereum were a security, then the ETH futures ETF would be an illegal instrument. The SEC cannot approve an illegal instrument to trade over a national securities exchange. It will be interesting to watch what, if any, excuse the SEC uses if it were to delay or deny an Ethereum ETF given it has already informed the market on Ethereum being outside of its jurisdiction. The SEC's conduct in refusing to acknowledge these facts is causing confusion and actively harming the public. Look, guys. What's going to happen with Ethereum this cycle is a big unknown. It's so common for elites and financial regulators to create FUD like this and then buy when it's low. But we just don't know. Make sure you subscribe. We're going to have more info. Oh, God. All right. Shout out to Altcoin Daily for that. But yeah, I mean, again, everyone's situation is different, right? When it comes to uh, when it comes to investing in crypto and everything else. And it's, you know, a 2x is a good gain for somebody that doesn't have a lot of money, right? It's it's a it's a good gain. It is, it is what it is, right? Um, Ethereum, I think it's going to easily 2x. Um, I don't know exactly where it's going to go. Nobody knows, right? But I would say 7 to 10K would be my goal to get out of Ethereum. But, I mean, it could absolutely go over five figures easily. Easily. Uh, Mr. Let's see who that was, to be honest. Mr. DJ Deathstar, thank you so much for the $5 super Perfect. chat. He said 2x of 100 isn't great. 7x is a bit better. It's all based on what is invested. 100x or more is almost like playing the lottery. Yes, exactly. So like that's that's what it comes down to, right? The uh you're not going to get you're not always going to get 100x or 10x. Like it's not going to happen. It's just not. Like you get lucky a lot. Yeah. Like you can get lucky for sure. Like you can invest in good coins. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Solana, when I was saying to buy it at nine, uh, it was, what was it, $19 or something? I think it was under 20 bucks. And I was like, shit, Solana's a good buy. I mean, damn, like you're doing well. It was like a 20X or 10X, whatever it is. It's legit already 10X from where it was at. It's going to be a friggin' 20X. You know what I mean? This shit's going to go up ridiculous. Solana has a good future in front of it. But again, it depends what projects you get, you get into. Like you look at XRP, for example, right? People that are like, oh, they won their court case. Like I'm so excited in the things like 2X since, since the court case, if that like, I, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it depends which projects you get in on. Right. And it depends how much money you put in on it. Right. So I don't know. It is what it is. If you put a zero in front of any of the coins, like you get 10 Ethereum, you're obviously going to have a way better return versus one ethereum right but you gotta have money to play games so it's it depends it depends how much you actually invest in what you guys choose to invest into but anyways recapping again we're at sixty seven thousand five hundred and forty one dollars for bitcoin big Hadouken for 
Bitcoin coming back from the dead yesterday. I actually think I, I hit a uh, limit order at 60,000 something yesterday, which is kind of shocking. I woke up this morning. I was like, ooh, I'm like, one of those orders went through. Nice. So it must have wicked down for a minute and grabbed it. Uh, again, Ethereum 3555 five, five, looking pretty good. Crypto bubbles. Let's see what's the biggest earner on the week. As of right now, it looks like this uh, Ondo. Ondo 97. Again, up 33 ranks on the week. 77 cents. And Jupiter looks like it's the next biggest earner on the week so far 60 second place up 32 ranks a dollar 29 does anybody hold jupiter any of you guys hold jupiter let me know dog <laughs> what is that so that's not a coin that is not a coin dog with coq there's not no way that's hysterical that's not real oh my god it is real <laughs> Oh, uh, why is it real? That's hysterical. Dude, these meme coins, man. They're funny. They're funny, but like, God, people that put money into these things just blows my mind. What's the, uh, like, where's the information? Where is the information? This is, I, dude, I didn't even know this thing existed. What is this? It's on the Avalanche chain, but that's about it. How many coins are there? Where does it say? Market cap 13.7k. Huh. I mean, see, like, if you could get a bunch of coins and like hit it big on a meme coin, like shit, yeah, you can make a bunch of money. But you guys gotta be careful, you could lose a shit ton too. <laughs> like real fast. Let's go to categories real quick. Um over here. This is uh, I like to come here and just kind of go to categories and click on meme coins or whatever coin. I already go buy it. I probably already did. D pen's actually a good one to look into. Dog themed coins. Where the hell are the meme coins? Oh, right here. Duh. 10 in 10th place. So, all the meme coins are categorized right here. Baby Doge. I have a lot of this. I have like 11 billion. This Slurf one you guys were talking about yesterday. The dude, or oh, we talked about it yesterday for like a brief minute. I never heard of it until yesterday, but I guess the guy ended up uh, burning a bunch of coins by accident i guess we're gonna have to see i guess we're gonna have to see what happens with that one uh myro how's myro doing 23 cents up 14.9 percent in the 24 hours nice let me see is there anything that's like really popping out nothing nothing's real actually you know what let's do this let's do this let's go to 24 hours what's the biggest earner Do <laughs> doge eat doge <laughs> what <laughs> look at this thing up 257 percent in the past 24 hours that's actually a good way to do it too you guys can just click on the 24 hour and it lists them all in order what's the biggest loser in 24 hours who pou i don't know what that is never heard of it never heard of it but like this is where you guys are going to get like the 100x 1000x like looking at these large or these coins that are like way up in the ranks right like a thousand 117 doji doge right like look at this like these people made a shit ton of money 20 million dollar market cap like why why is there so much money into that coin it's crazy crazy mr retro bike tech thank you so much for the 199 super chat who's going to be the first to mint oval with cat <laughs> i still want max with hat that's what i want max with hat someone needs to do that for his birthday please that'd be great <laughs> It'd be hysterical. Uh, look up Popcat. 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 Oh, I've seen this one. I've seen this logo. I've seen this logo. I have. Oh, wow. This had a good run, too. God damn. What? Wasn't even a penny in February. And that shit hit 35 cents. What? Bruh. What is wrong with people? That's insane. Wow. All right. So the, the thing, the thing here is look at this. Fully electric actually pointed this out to me, us yesterday. Circulating supply. All of the coins are out. All of them. They're all out. They're all circulating somewhere. $179 million in the market. Solana meme coin. Solana meme coins are just killing it. And that's, you know what? That's half the reason Solana is killing it because the fees and everything running on Solana, it's just. I don't know. Exploding. Stoke with a money sign. What is that? 
Mm. Stoner cats. Sto <laughs> Stoner cats. <laughs> Look at this. How did they get a big logo? What the hell? That's hysterical. Stoner cats. Look at that. I don't know what that other one is, though. Stoke. Just Oh, just toke? Maybe. Which one is it? I don't know. I'd have to go to coin market cap, I think. Let's see. Oh, I still spelled it wrong. Damn it. Oh, God. God. Why does anything do that? Why does it just come on dark mode immediately and you can change it off if you don't want it? Toke. All right. It's on coin market cap. A dollar seven. This one? This is this it? Fully diluted market cap. Yeah, max supply, total supply. Yeah, so everything's out. Oh, wait, no, it's not. I lied. Circulating supply. There's only 16. 16 million out of 100 million. Oh, wow. So they're only 16.31% out in the market. Interesting. This is an Ethereum coin. Toke. What is it, though? I don't know what it is. Never heard of it. Has anybody heard of this? Anybody into this? No, this isn't it. I don't know. Crypto Scotty. This is it. Guac, dude. You freaking. <laughs> you guys. Guac. You and your guacamole. Let's see. 19.59%. Jeez. Let's see. Let's check out the one year. Look at this thing. This thing keeps peeking up. Man, you guys can make a killing off this shit. Man, these are some big swings. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six zeros. I guess it stayed in the six zeros. It's just moved a couple couple decimals. I mean, not decimals, a uh, couple numbers. So it's still got six zeros in front of it. But man, you guys, whoever was in it here made a shit ton because they that moved two, two decimals to the left, which is uh, definitely made some crazy money. Pirate Chain becomes merge mineable with Varus 4-1 April 1st. Nice, oh, Mr. Retro Mike, thank you for the 199 Super Chat. That's uh, interesting. Pirate Chain. Pirate Chain. Pirate Chain isn't... Oh, God, why did I do that? Oh. Pirate. Uh, this... Which one is it? Oh, Pirate Chain, right here. This is that one that Hobbyist wore that stupid pirate hat on his thumbnail. <laughs> is, that, is that this coin? Is that this one? That's a riot. Worst thumbnail of 2024. <laughs> this one, man. Merge mineable pirate chain, huh? What is this all about? Does anybody know? Let's see. We have circulating supply 196,000. 196,000 circulating supply. So it's almost all out. 4 million left. Not even. Three something. Wow. Hmm. I don't know. Is it going to be worth it? Let me know. Fat boy coin? Is that a thing? Oh, shit. You know what? Leo Lustig, I'm glad you just said something because I almost forgot again. Why is my shit glitching, kind of? All right. Leo Lustig sent me a shirt, actually. I think. Oh, it is a shirt. Dude, this is sick. This is the one you sent. You sent me a picture of this, and I forgot. Look at this. That is dope. That is a sick shirt. My man, Leo Lustig. Guys, Leo Lustig has a shirt store, actually. Dude, that's cool as hell, man. I love that. That looks so cool. That's badass. Leo Lustig, put your put your store in the chat, please. I'm gonna wear this tomorrow. That's cool as hell. I like that. I'll wear that tomorrow. That's freaking cool. If you guys are interested, go check out Leo Lustig's store. That's actually a dope shirt. That's really cool. I really like that. Good stuff, man. Yeah, it's got my logo on it, too. That's neat. Dude, that's awesome. Thank you, Leo. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it a lot. All right, guys. Listen, I got to go take care of the kids. Daddy duty calls. Hopefully, you guys have a great, happy, and safe Thursday. I'll catch you guys bright and early tomorrow morning around 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hopefully, I won't be late. But until then, I'll catch you guys real soon. Peace out. Leo Lustig, put that thing in the chat, will you? Thank you very much. There it is. Grim is dead art studio. Let's check it out just before we get out of here. I'm going to throw it in on screen rather right here.
from his dead studio look at that he's got a bunch of shirts everything you guys could hope for that's amazing damn you got some cool stuff on here man good stuff got some bitcoin merch some wall art Ooh, that's actually really cool look at that and they're cheap too damn all right guys get it go check it out appreciate you guys catch you soon peace out have a good day Let's go raid Miss Randy Hipper. She starts in 15 minutes or 10 minutes rather. Peace, peace.